Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your CHEM 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, I want to come back and talk a little bit more about alkene stereoisomers. We talked in the previous video about the fact that uh, something like butene can have several different constitutional isomers. So the double bond can be either starting at carbon 1 and but 1-ene, or starting at carbon 2, as in the case of but 2-ene, as well as there can be carbon skeleton rearrangements. Those are all constitutional isomers. So if we look at the relationship between these two molecules, or these two molecules, or these two molecules, for example, these are all examples of constitutional isomers. When we had the case of but 2-ene, now we saw that because of restricted rotation about the double bond, that stereoisomers could exist where groups on there are displayed either trans, opposite sides, or cis on the same side. Now when we use these terms cis and trans, what that's referring to is two of the same like groups being either on the same or opposite sides. So in the case of cis butuene, we can talk about this either as the two hydrogens, which are identical groups on either end of the double bond, are on the same side, or we could look at this particular example where this happens to have two like alkyl groups on the same side. Doesn't necessarily have to be the same. These could be different as long as you have at least one pair being the same. For example, these two hydrogens. Same thing for the trans. The two hydrogens are on opposite sides of the double bond and the two methyl groups, which are identical groups, are on opposite sides. The cis and trans naming system for identifying light groups as being either on the same side or opposite sides works well in many cases. However, there are situations when we have double bonds where there are four different groups attached. If you look at either side of this uh, double bond in this example on the top left, what we see is that on the left side there's a hydrogen and a chlorine, and on the right side there's a bromine and a fluorine. Take a look at the other compound here. We also have chlorine and hydrogen on one side and fluorine and bromine on the other side. These are stereoisomers of each other. In this case, the fluorine and the bromine have been switched relative to the groups on the molecule on the left. However, when we want to try to name this, we can't use cis and trans because what are we talking about being on the same side or opposite sides? That makes it a little more ambiguous in terms of how we can name these systems. We have to have some kind of systematic way to identify which groups are the ones we're talking about being on the same or opposite sides. So in the naming system, what we have is a system which uh, we can use the terms E and Z to identify the groups. And I'll explain how we determine these for these two different isomers. But Z is the German zusammen, which means together, and E stands for the German word entgegen, which means opposite. The rules for assigning this is based on what is referred to as the kahn ingold prelog rules for priorities. So when we talk about something being on the same side, or Z, zusammen, we're talking about the two highest priority groups on either end of the double bond. And when we talk about the E isomer, and Gagan opposite, we're talking about the two highest priority groups being on the opposite side. So again, if we look at splitting the double bond down the middle and compare the left to the right, we can look at, uh, let's just look at this isomer here for an example. The kahn ingold prelog rules state that you need to look at the atoms directly connected to the carbon of the double bond. That would be these two atoms here. Rank the atoms according to their atomic number. So hydrogen versus chlorine, which would have the highest atomic number? The highest atomic number would get priority over the lower one. So in this case, chlorine would have higher priority than hydrogen. Now if we look at the other side of the double bond, we have a bromine and a fluorine. And again, what we need to do is look at their atomic numbers, and the one with a higher atomic number is the higher priority one. So bromine has a higher atomic number than fluorine, so bromine is the highest priority group. So when we use this term Z to refer to the stereochemistry of the double bond, we're referring to the two highest priority groups are on the same side. And likewise, for the E isomer, we can do the same analysis. Chlorine has the highest priority on the left side of the double bond, and bromine has the highest priority on the right side of the double bond. And since they are on opposite sides, that would be the E isomer or entgegen. Now I should point out that this E and Z nomenclature can also be used for cases where we could still also use cis and trans. For example, this transbutuene, if you look at the left side of this, the carbon atom attached, carbon has a higher priority over hydrogen, 
and the carbon on the right side has a higher priority over the hydrogen on the right side. So those groups are on opposite sides. This could also be called the E-butene, whereas this one, higher priority on the left, higher priority on the right, this could be called the Z. You, in this case, you could use either trans and cis or E and Z interchangeably. This naming system gets a little more complicated if we have the same atom directly connected to the carbon on the end. So let's take a look at this example. For simplicity, I've made the left side of this very obvious for which group is higher priority. It happens to be the chlorine that I've indicated in green here because chlorine has a higher atomic number. However, on the right side, if we look at the atom directly connected to the double bond, those would be two different carbons. They have identical atomic numbers. So there's no difference when we look at that atom. If there is no difference when we look at the first atom attached and make a distinction, then we have to look out further to see if there's a difference. And one way I like to look at this is to draw a tree. So if we look at this top group, CH3, it's attached to the carbon. This is, would be the bond attached to the double bond carbon I'm indicating here. The first atom is a carbon, okay? If we look at the bottom case, uh, the first atom attached to the carbon of the double bond is a carbon. There's no distinction at this layer. If we go out further, this carbon on the top is attached to three different hydrogens. So we have a, a second layer out to look at. And if we look at this case, that carbon is attached to two hydrogens and now a carbon. So we don't have to look out any further. We have now made a distinction that in this case we have hydrogen, 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 and then carbon. So all things being equal, this group on the bottom would get the higher priority. That's why I've indicated it here in yellow as the higher priority. These are on opposite sides of the double bond, so this is an E alkene. Well, let's take a look at another example. This happens to be a Z alkene, and this is something important to be careful about when you're assigning these priorities. It looks like this group on the bottom would be a larger group than this group on the top. However, that group on the top has an atom with a higher atomic number. Thus, it makes it a higher priority. This happens to be a Z alkene. So let's go through this. So again, if I look at the left side, it's, there's a clear distinction between chlorine and hydrogen. If we look at the right side, we can draw our trees again, and I'm going to do it in this direction. So on the top case here, uh, the first atom attached to the carbon of the double bond is a carbon. Same thing in the bottom case. The first carbon attached is a carbon. Okay, We can't make a distinction at this level, at that layer. So we need to look at what's attached to that. On the top carbon, there's two hydrogens and an oxygen. So I can draw that out in the next layer here. Two hydrogens and an oxygen. Whereas in the bottom case, we have two hydrogens attached and a carbon. So right here we can make a distinction. Everything that is identical we sort of cancel out here. That's the same, that's the same. Now we have a distinction between oxygen and carbon. The oxygen would have the higher priority. No matter if there's a lot more mass even further out, it's, we've made a distinction at this level and we don't go any further. We have a higher atomic number system, so that is the higher priority group. Now let's take a look at one more example here. Again, we have chlorine over hydrogen on the left side, but let's take a look at the right side. In this top case, we have a, a carbon directly attached, and in the bottom, we have a carbon directly attached. Now this carbon on top is attached to two hydrogens and a carbon. That's two hydrogens here and then the carbon next to it. This carbon, however, is attached to one hydrogen and two carbons. So there's th this means that there's a CH3 and a CH3. Okay. So even though there's an oxygen, a higher priority group out here further, we don't go any further than those two layers because we look at this first layer, those are identical. We look at the second layer, we have hydrogen, hydrogen cancels, we have a carbon and a carbon cancels, and now we see that there's a hydrogen versus a carbon that has higher priority. We've made a distinction, we don't go out any further, and so this group on the bottom would have a higher priority over the group on the top. So this is E alkene. E alkene. One further complication that we have is what do we do when we have groups with multiple bonds? How do we deal with that in terms of assigning priorities? And in this case, I've shown you um, how we envision what that extra bond is. So when we look at this first carbon that's attached, uh, we consider each bond 
in virtually as being attached to another carbon in either direction. So if you imagine taking this bond and building two bonds to the groups on either side, we are imagining these atoms only for the purpose of trying to assign priority. So if we take a look at this, in this direction the carbon is attached to a CH2 group, that's why I have I have put that here, so imagine this CH group just moving up and putting a bond there. Um, on the other hand, if we look at the other side, the other direction for this, this carbon is attached to a CH group, and so if you imagine folding that up and putting a bond, that would be the CH here. These are virtual atoms, they don't really exist, but this is how we uh, imagine it in order to assign priorities. So then we can go out and we can take a look at that group versus this group and uh, look at the carbon directly attached. That's that layer and that layer, those are identical. We go out to the next layer, we have carbon, hydrogen, carbon, and here we have carbon, hydrogen, carbon. We can't make a distinction. That's why we need to imagine these virtual atoms in order to make a distinction. This layer is all hydrogens. Here we have hydrogen, hydrogen, and a carbon. So that carbon now gets the priority. So the double bonded group here is a higher priority for looking at the stereochemistry of that Z alkene. This can get a little bit complicated and I would encourage you to practice some examples of these types of easy priority designations.